rare pioneering spirit, Rejoice Deshu, will not stop at anything until she sees all children off the streets and back in the classroom. Despite the social, economic and political issues the country is facing as more and more parents are failing to send their children to school due to financial constraints, Rejoice Deshu from Ziwara Sekwa is providing a solution for the community. Joyce Deshu. I'm the founder of Jubilee Study Center, uh, which has been founded through Jubilee Welfare Trust. Well, we started this work last year in August when I realized that there were a lot of children around our school, our streets who were not going to school. Uh, it started by just a small number, about four to five children we identified last term. So we were taking them for classes, me and my husband, who is Pastor Deshu. So by the end of that term, more were coming in saying we have heard we are teaching children who are underprivileged or orphaned for free. And we said, yes, we can come with them. And by that time, we sought other help from qualified personnel who advised us to register as a welfare trust so that you can operate on that on that ground so we oh, we registered the welfare trust uh, by the beginning of this year and now we are a registered welfare trust we, which is operating as a study center we have enrolled some more children by the close of last term that is the first term of the year we had some 173 children coming from grade 0 to form 3 and as we are speaking right now we have uh, passing 230 students we, who are coming now, we have moved, the, we started operating at home where we would teach children under the trees and on a shed, a small shed that we directed at home. But we approached a church where we are now and they allowed us to use their premises for our, for our classes. So we are now here with our children and more children are coming in because it was a problem in our community. There are a lot of children, even now as we are speaking, who are not going to school. Some are orphaned, some couldn't pay fees for their last grades and they were expelled from the schools they were going in. The Form 1 classes, we, we have children who have not even seen their grade 7 results because of lack of payment for fees for last, for last year. So we, are just, we have just been gathering them in telling them to study now, even as they will go back and clear those days to see their results. But we are, take, we are telling them, no, it's not good for them to stay at home. It's rather better for them to get something as they are waiting. That's why operating as a study center, of which we, we have hopes of, of formalizing it even more to go to the status of being a proper school. From where we've come from to where we are now, we are seeing a a slight, a slight improvement because we were crying for space. Now we are here, it's a bigger place than where we are, where we were back then. But the challenge now is we are operating on one shed. This is a church we are operating on. So we just sit the classes just a distance away from each other. There's no partitioning. Uh, the second class, the next class can hear what you are saying. The children, uh, the children's attention can be carried to the next class while their teacher is still teaching. So, of course, yeah, it's much, it's much better than where we, we were. We, uh, we have more toilets here. Uh, the children can play. The yard is big, but we are hoping for something even better. We would want to, to get our grade zeros because they are the noisy class to get them maybe outside to put a shed for them. We've been allowed that by the, the owners of this place. But for now we can't because of the funds. We have not yet managed to do that. We would also want to maybe partition the place. Maybe if you can get something we can put temporarily during the week and remove it by Saturday so that they can have their church service on Sunday. They've all, they've okayed that but we cannot right now because we have not been able to get the, the materials for it. And also they've, uh, they've allowed us to put an office outside which we can use for school business, uh, which we would want also to erect outside. Uh, there is the issue again of textbooks. 
we are saying the children now, with the help of the church, uh, we have more chairs for the children. Almost all our students, are, if I say almost, no, it's all, all our students are now sitting on chairs, but we don't have books as yet. The textbooks are scarce, especially for the bigger classes, you find you, you'll have to do comprehension, maybe with one textbook. Then the whole class wants to listen when you are reading the story. Come to the time they want to answer the comprehension, they've forgotten what you read for them. Uh, because for these children, they've been at home, their memories need a little bit, bit of uh, cranking. So they would need to read for themselves for them to answer questions. They are not that quick to get what you are saying if you are using your mouth. Maybe your, your, your reading would be faster for their understanding. So we, we are crying for textbooks. We want textbooks, maybe. If you can say three are sharing one or even two are sharing one, the better. So we can so that they can understand more. They can get what you what is being said more. So that is an issue of textbooks. We also have issues of other uh, other children who are coming from hard hard homes where things are not well. Where just today we had an incident of two young boys. One is in grade one, the other one is in grade three. And the teacher came to me, and she just she she was so amazed. She she just she she just said to me, "Come look at this 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 boy's neck. The neck was uh, it was dirty. It was like she he had not been bad thing for the past two weeks or three weeks or so." And we asked him, and he actually said, "Yes, I have not been bad thing because my mother is not at home all the time." So we had to buy soap. We had to buy a towel. Fortunately, we have a bathroom here for the church, so we use that bathroom to bath them so that they will get home clean. The teacher had to wash the shirt for the, the uniform shirt for that boy because it was very dirty. So we, we want also to get to their homes to look at the situations because we are saying if a child is coming from a, from a home like that, how can they concentrate in class? How can they get what the teacher is saying? In It, it is even more possible that from such a home, the child has not even eaten. The child is, of, is um, on an empty stomach. They can't concentrate. They are looking at other children. Look, that one is eating. So we want to, 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 to get something to help these children. If, an, if we can get somewhere uh, to, to a place where we can go to their homes, look at what is happening at home. Some are living with grannies who can't afford to feed them, who can't afford to wake up in the morning to see they are clean, to see they have washed their uniforms when they come back from home, uh, from work, uh, from school. So we are saying if you can get as much help as you can so that you can also go to their homes, we can reach out to their families. Because we are saying the, the future of these children uh, it, uh, the, their futures are in our hands. We have to do something to help them. We have to do something to reshape their destinies. Because as it is right now, uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of help is needed. Their, their cases are so, so touching. You, you, you see that there is a lot you can do. Even with the little that is there, there is a lot that little can change. Yeah. When we started operating, we were two. My husband and I we were taking all the classes, but now uh, we got to a stage where we wanted a teacher for the grade twos, and we approached a lady who had a year son here, who was also in grade two. She volunteered to come and help. Uh, she was taking another class, so I was still with the grade twos, but soon the word began to spread and more more people were coming in saying, we want to help you, we want to teach, we want to also help you. By uh, by the time we closed the last term, we were about five teachers. But today, as we are speaking, we have reached to where we are maybe 10, 10 people who are teaching classes. And the pastor is now going on to do the administration work. He's no longer taking any class because people are still coming in. They are saying they want to come. Just today, we, we had a guy who came, who came here and he said, I want to teach history in the high schools. We, we are telling them this is voluntary, uh, something that you would expect someone to just turn back and go. But they are saying, we, yes, we know. We know the work you are doing. That's why we want to, to also partner with you. So uh, the teaching staff is coming.
coming. Some we have just been saying, write your letters when we feel the need for you, we are going to call you. So more and more have written their letters and we still have them, their letters here. And also the issue still on teaching, the issue now is on our boards. The, the classes are now dividing because we are taking them in groups, like we are grouping group, grade five and grade fours, grade sixes and grade sevens. Now we are splitting them because more teachers have come in. But now the issue is on boards where to write. The boards are now few. They are mm, the the classes that were that's the board we that's the number of boards we had. So now we are looking for maybe help so that we can get boards. The types of boards that we would want are standalone boards because we now we the, the place we are using you have to take everything out at the end of the day to put them in a in, in a locked place. So we would want some some boards that can stand by themselves so that we can also take them to where we are taking the chairs. Uh, I think that's that's how far the teachers are. We are seeing the end of God there. More and more are coming. Some, some, someone even came and they said, I want to volunteer as a social worker. I want to talk with the children. Since you're saying some of them have got issues at home. So there's a guy who came in, who came in here. He's also working with child line. So he offered to help with the children. He said, I can come. Even if you say on Fridays, I'll take sessions with the children who you see have the greatest need of counseling. So I can just sit with them, I'll talk with them, I'll get to the root of their cases, see how we can help them. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page, 263chat.